Professor Dave again, let's discuss quantum chromodynamics. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We saw how quantum electrodynamics takes the electromagnetic force and explains it in terms of quanta, an exchange of particles that mediates the force, virtual photons in this case. There are three more fundamental forces to go, the strong and weak nuclear forces, as well as gravity, and for a coherent view of the universe, we must be able to explain each of these forces with its own quantum field theory. For the nuclear forces, this will require that we familiarize ourselves with a brand new type of particle, the quark. In general chemistry, we learned how J.J. Thomson's cathode ray experiment brought about the realization that atoms were not the smallest things. And we soon realized that atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But as it turns out, protons and neutrons are in turn made up of smaller particles still. And these are quarks of different varieties. The name quark comes from the writings of James Joyce, who spoke of three quarks for muster mark. As quarks typically come in groups of three, the title seemed apropos. These quarks also come in three kinds of color charge, which refers to the three kinds of color perceived by humans, red, green, and blue. This does not have anything to do with the actual phenomenon of color. It is just a way of categorizing quarks. And since chroma means color in Greek, quantum chromodynamics became the name of the quantum field theory that deals with quarks. Protons and neutrons are each comprised of three quarks, which are forever bound. Quarks of different color charge exert an attractive force between one another, like the electromagnetic force between particles of opposite electrical charge. But the difference is that the electromagnetic force weakens as particles of like charge are pulled further apart, whereas the attraction between quarks will strengthen as they are pulled apart so they always stick together. Protons are made of two up quarks and one down quark, while neutrons are made of one up quark and two down quarks. Up quarks have a two-thirds positive charge and down quarks have a one-third negative charge. So, doing the math, we can see how we arrive at plus one and zero as the charges on the proton and neutron. There are other types of quarks beyond the up and down quark. There are also top, bottom, charm, and strange quarks, which have different properties. We must understand that the attractive force between quarks is what keeps the particles of the nucleus together. It is the strong nuclear force capable of keeping positively charged protons together against their electromagnetic repulsion. And just like QED did for the electromagnetic force, QCD shows that the strong nuclear force is mediated by the exchange of quanta called gluons. It is the exchange of these gluons, which come in eight varieties, that keeps an atomic nucleus stable. We can see that our quantum field theories are getting more complicated, as QED needed just one particle, the photon. The quantum field theory that governs the weak nuclear force needs three particles in the form of W and Z bosons. But the strong nuclear force, as we said, requires eight gluons. Okay, let's slow down for a minute. Quarks, bosons, gluons, what is going on? What happened to just plain old protons, neutrons, and electrons? As much of a headache as you may now have, we need to accept that the development of quantum theory brought along with it dozens of new particles that need to be categorized and understood. Luckily, we have a model that organizes all of them nicely. So let's learn the basics about all these particles next. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.